Hello folks, another quiet day in the markets to round off a shortened trading week with the Nasdaq barely budging and Soundhound moving less than 1% on low volume. In this video, I'll give you guys an overview of the AI boom this quarter and where we're at in the cycle, Soundhound's price action today and my forecast for Soundhound going forward. Before we begin, most of you are not subscribed, so please hit that like and subscribe button to get instant updates when I post sound on videos. And also, I'm not a financial advisor, so take all my content with a grain of salt and seek professional financial advice if you need to. This chart shows Soundhound's year-to-date performance alongside a couple of other small-cap AI hype stocks like Big B AI, Recursion Pharmaceuticals, Nano X, and I've added Palantir as a reference because it's the leader right now when it comes to pure play AI stocks. So this chart shows the first quarter performance of all these stocks. As you can see, Soundhound has gained the most since January the 1st. What's interesting though is that a lot of these other small cap AI stocks also went up during the quarter, but they have not been able to hold on to most of their gains while Soundhound has. Take for example Big Bear AI. It went up more than 100% at one point in the quarter, but it has since given back all of its gains. Soundhound went up about five times at one point, and yes, it has come down a fair amount, but it's still up more than 100% this quarter versus basically a round trip for Big Bear. So what does this say about Soundhound stock? Well, to me, it says that Soundhound is the best stock out of all these small caps. To me, the only good stock is one that goes up. The whole point of investing is not to buy cheap stocks, but to buy stocks that go up. The fact that Soundhound has managed to hold on to the majority of its gains tells me that there is underlying strength in the stock and that it's probably going to go higher in the future. All of these stocks are part of the same group and that is the AI sector. There's been a lot of discussion recently about an AI bubble. I don't think we are in one yet, but it's likely that this cycle will finish with an AI bubble popping. So here is where I think we are in this cycle. Right now we've had the initial bit of excitement about AI, but now the small caps are experiencing a bit of a trough. Hopefully we'll be out of this phase in the next few weeks, but once we are past that, I believe we'll see continued growth in the AI sector, particularly in the small caps. We recently saw the small cap indexes like the Russell 2000 break out to new 52 week highs, and even today we saw it make a new high, so things are looking positive for small caps. Some people might say that we're already at the top of the cycle and calling this a bubble, but I don't think we're there yet because of several reasons. Euphoria has not peaked, valuations are still reasonable, and bubble indicators are not there yet. So to the first point, when I say euphoria, I'm talking about mass delusions whereby the public will cram into IPOs that go up 100% or more on the first day. Whilst we are seeing signs of that happening, like with Reddit and the recent DWAC, Donald Trump's back merger, it's not really that prevalent and the IPO market is actually still pretty dead. Once you see AI stocks with no revenues and no earnings, IPOing with $10 billion valuations going up triple digits on their debut, that's when I'll start looking at getting out, but we're definitely not there yet. When it comes to valuations, let's use Nvidia as an example. Currently it's trading on a forward price to sales of 20, according to this website. At the height of the dot-com bubble, Yahoo was trading on a Ford price to sales as high as 104. Yep, over 100 Ford price to sales ratio. Furthermore, Nvidia's Ford price to earnings is around 30, which is actually quite low for such a high growth stock. Finally, bubble indicators are not there yet. Take for example, margin debt. This is a good indicator of euphoria in the stock market, and as you can see in this chart, margin debt is still below the highs we saw in 2021. Once margin debt skyrockets and reaches a new all-time high, that's when I'd start to get worried. Another bubble indicator is the put call ratio. This measures how bearish people are, and the more bearish they are, the higher the number. This is a good contrarian indicator because it helps you identify market bottoms because peak bearishness occurs at market bottoms. When you use it as a top indicator though, it's not as helpful, but if you study past market tops closely, you'll notice that the put call ratio generally starts to go lower before the market tops. Take 2021 for example, we see that the put call ratio was persistently low all throughout this period, and guess what happened after? We got a bear market. But if I take a look at the put call ratio recently, it's not at extremes, and in fact, it's been going higher, which means people are getting more bearish. Since the average person is usually wrong about the market direction, I think this means the market is probably going to go higher. But if the put call ratio starts to rapidly go lower and turn bullish, that's when I'd start to get worried about a top. 
So if you look at all these data points, we are most definitely not at the top of the current market cycle and I see no reason to be worried. The future is looking bright for the AI sector and SoundHound, but now let's take a look at what happened to the share price today. There was an attempt to go higher in the morning, but the buying dried up as the day progressed and we got a quiet finish. I've been predicting these low volatility, low volume days for a little while now, and we got another one today. So for how much longer are we going to get these? Well, these consolidation phases can take anywhere from a few weeks to a few months, but because SoundHound is such a high octane stock, it might try to break out again in the next week or two, especially if we get some positive news. If you've been holding SoundHound, you'll be aware that we're waiting for it to announce a large new restaurant customer, and that could happen any day now. So my forecast then is for SoundHound to continue to bounce around in this $5 to $7 consolidation box next week, and possibly the week after. Just be aware that we'll be getting the February core PCE data tomorrow, and if that number is hotter than expected, we might see a sell-off in the markets on Monday. Hopefully the number comes out as expected and turns into a non-issue. So in summary, it's going to be a bit of a grind the next few weeks, but I'm positive on SoundHound because we're still in a bull market, the AI sector is still strong, and SoundHound is just pausing before jumping up again. All right, thanks for watching. Click like and subscribe for daily SoundHound updates, and I hope you all have a safe and happy Easter weekend. See you next week.